Kevin Bowen from Colts.com, featured writer from Colts.com. You can also find him on Twitter at KBowenColts. And uh, Kevin, as always, appreciate the time. Some thoughts uh, with this past weekend's game against St. Louis. The Colts get a win, 23-11, if memory serves me correctly. It's kind of the dress rehearsal for the regular season, as uh, I suspect we won't see any of the starters come Thursday night. But uh, just uh, from what you saw against the Rams, some takeaways from that game? Yeah, I think you got to be pretty pleased with what you saw out of the starters. You know, a little bit of an extended run into the third quarter for some guys, especially on the defensive side of the ball. Uh, first team offense, I thought the offensive line that was the you know one unit I was really watching going up against that Rams defensive line. There's so many talented guys, not only off the edge but in the interior. And Andrew Luck was hit just twice in the first half, no sacks. I think coming out of that Bears performance, you had to be pleased with what you saw of the offensive line. You ran the ball effectively on the first drive, struggled a little bit after that. Um, but, again, I, I was pleased with what I saw from the first-team first, first team offensive line. And then I think it was key to get that two-minute drive in late in the first half, ended in a field goal. I think that's a big reason why you play these third preseason games and play your starters for that long is try to get some guys in game-setting situational football. So I think that was key from the defensive standpoint. Obviously, the Arthur Jones injury is kind of the big news and, and really health is the only thing that I, I try to keep a close, close eye on in the preseason. Um, but besides that, I thought your defense played pretty well. Outside of one play, the double kind of fake reverse, they hit the big touchdown to Brian Quick. He did a nice job in a run defense standpoint. So that's back-to-back weeks that your starting unit has done a nice job um, against the run. So all in all, again, outside of the Jones injury, I think you got to be pretty pleased with what you saw. And like you said, that's going to be the last time you're going to see the starters until Buffalo. You mentioned Art Jones. Is there anything new? I know last I had read yesterday he was going for a second opinion. Has there been any word from the team exactly what the extent of the injury is, or are they waiting until they get some kind of confirmation from medical officials? I think it's all just a confirmation standpoint. Chuck Pagano on his presser today and said just waiting. A final evaluation, Arthur Jones was in the locker room today. Uh, obviously declined any comment on his injury. So I think now it's just a wait-and-see process. They try to gather up all this medical information and see where he's at. But, you know, even if he's out for any period of time, it's, it's a massive loss. And, and Henry Anderson, the third-round pick out of Stanford, I thought played pretty well on Saturday night, you know, filling in for Jones. Uh, but when you look at Art and just his impact last year, you know, it, it's a crazy stat. When he was on the field, the Colts were a full yard better against the run than when he was off the field. And that's just an insane number for one guy to contribute that much in the run team department. Is very impressive. So if he's out, you know, week one, you're going to obviously play one of the best running backs in the NFL in LaShawn McCoy. Uh, but then after that, you don't play too many elite, elite backs. Um, so, again, it, 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 if Jones misses time, Henry Anderson, the third-round pick, has got to fill in. There's got to be a guy that you're going to count on. And uh, I thought he did play, play well on Saturday, and Chuck Pagano was pleased with uh, what he gave the Colts at the defensive tackle spot. He primarily plays – defensive end but he sl- slid over to tackle when uh, Jones got hurt. T.Y. Hilton goes through concussion protocol after complaining of a headache at practice yesterday. Is Was there something that happened? I didn't get a chance to see all of the game on Saturday. Was there something that took place in the game on Saturday or how did we get from point A to point B? No, I, I, he said he kind of woke up Sunday morning and it sounded like he kind of ha- had a headache so went in there and was, is now on, under the protocol. And today at practice he was wearing a red non-contact jersey, so that's the next sign in the protocol. So I think everything is trending in the right direction from that standpoint. Obviously the Colts are going to benefit from not playing a meaningful game for another you know 10 or 11 days. So um, so I think everything is trending in the right direction, and I, I wouldn't be shocked if Hill was, was not on the field in uh, week one of Buffalo. So it looks, and that's what we kind of talked about a little bit yesterday, too, and I, I saw that he was in practice, which was a positive sign. I, I would imagine there'd have to be something catastrophic to take place between now and September 13th for him not to not to play on this team, uh, or at least play in that game anyway. Um, what is the latest on Vic Ballard? I know he's tweaked another hamstring. It's a guy, you we talked about him a couple of weeks ago, a, a guy that if uh, memory serves me correctly, that you're very high on. Uh, I was very high on him in the limited action that we've seen him play. Um, are they going to, I mean, is this going to be the end of the road for Vic Ballard if he can't get this hamstring squared away? I think that's the biggest question he- heading into Thursday night. And you guys are right. I'm, I'm very high on Vic, and this coaching staff is very high on Vic for, you know, just he's a complete runner. And, and not only what he does on the field, but what he does off the field as well. You know, I think he's a teammate that a lot of guys 
obviously have a ton of respect for what he's been through the past two years, non-contact, season-ending injuries, back-to-back seasons. But, yes, like you said, he pulled, uh, I think the hamstring tightened on him last Thursday in practice. It's the opposite hamstring, which was kind of nagging him up in Anderson in training camp. So he did not play um, Saturday in St. Louis, didn't even make the trip um, to that Rams game. If he's still on the roster right now, you know, if he can get any run Thursday night, obviously that would be huge for him because, again, the Colts just don't really have a true evaluation of where he's at health-wise. He played eight snaps in the second preseason game, two carries, and that's the only time he's been on the field in over 700 days. So can you make a true evaluation? Can you put him on your 53-man roster? That's such a tough, tough decision the Colts could be facing this weekend if he doesn't play on Thursday night. So, again, if he doesn't play Thursday, where do the Colts go at the running back position? Josh Robinson has looked pretty good all preseason long. I thought Tyler Varga, the undrafted kid who scored a late touchdown in St. Louis, showed some promise as well. So they're gonna, there's going to be a numbers crunch at the running back situation, and unfortunately Ballard is you know, right in the thick of that. Kevin Bowen, feature writer, Colts.com. Our guest, it's Ford and O'Brien, ESPN Evansville, 105.3 online, ESPNEvansville.com. One more on the injury front, and then we'll move on. Uh, Greg Toller, the neck injury. I think last I saw, he was a week-to-week kind of uh, designation. Any new news as far as his uh, status goes? Nothing. He, he has not practiced all week, and I, I think the next update you'll get on Toller will probably be, where we will get on Toller will probably be Monday, because that's the next time Chuck Pagano will talk to the media at besides after the game on Thursday night. So that's going to extend into next week. And the big thing there is that's just a domino effect at the cornerback position. It's Dejon Smith, the rookie third-round pick. Would he then start in your base set? Because, again, Darius Butler has been your nickel cornerback for the last three years, and it's been a pretty good nickel. So that's the decision the Colts potentially are going to have to make. If Toller does miss week one or, you know, miss the start of the regular season, you know, what do you do at the cornerback spot? besides Devontae Davis, obviously. And the good news there is you don't play too many elite, elite quarterbacks until mid-October and uh, early November. Well, on the uh, on the offensive side, T.Y. Hilton, obviously, you know, wide receiver one. But in this in this preseason in camp, when they brought Dorsett in as the first-round pick and then Moncrief coming into his sophomore season, if you will, who, in your opinion, uh, or from what you're hearing kind of around the camp there, Who's had who's had the better preseason? Who are they kind of leaning on a little heavier out of those two? You think out of Dante Moncrief and uh, Phil Dorsett? Yeah, yeah. I uh, that that is another tough one. I, I've always been a, been a big Moncrief guy, and I think the injury that Phil Dorsett suffered against the Bears, the knee contusion, has kind of set him back a little bit. Didn't play against the Rams. Moncrief got obviously all the first team work at that number three wideout spot. I mean, I do think that's going to be pretty interchangeable throughout the season. But as of now, I would go with Moncrief. Again, he gives you a little bigger threat, you know, similar to a guy in Andre Johnson, but he still has that game-breaking ability that we saw last season. You saw it against Washington when he had a big game. You saw it against Pittsburgh when he was filling in for Reggie Wayne. Even that Cleveland game late in the season, I still go back to a big third down in that game when you were down five points. I want to say it was like a third and seven. You were kind of backed up on your own goal line. Moncrief made a huge diving catch over the middle. So I think there's some trust factor there between Andrew Luck and him. And, and I would say right now he is kind of your candidate to be that third wide out. But with Pep Hamilton, you know full well that Phil Dorsett is going to play a lot. And with that speed and that playmaking ability, all he needs to do is touch the ball a couple times and he can make a serious impact. So and I still fully expect him to be your punt returner to start the season and possibly your kick returner, depending on if it's him or Boom Heron or maybe even Moncrief back there as well. Kevin Bowen, Colts.com, our guest, Ford and O'Brien, ESPN Evansville 105.3. Final preseason uh, game of the year coming up on Thursday. Again, we'll have it for you here. Colts take on the Bengals at Lucas Oil Stadium. Pre-game starts at 5 o'clock on ESPN Evansville 105.3. And this is uh, pretty much for the guys that are kind of on the bubble. This is their chance, Kevin. As you know, you've been there with the team for a number of years now. Uh, this is their opportunity to shine and try to make that 53-man roster, which needs to be cut down. What, what's the date? What's the deadline on the 53-man roster? Sometime this weekend, isn't it? Yeah, Saturday at 4 o'clock Saturday is when your 53-man roster is due. So right now the roster is 75. And obviously, anybody can do the math. 22 guys that are going to be suiting up on Thursday night will not be here on Saturday. And the thing to keep in mind, too, is when you cut down to 53, you know, even if you're one of those final guys that make the roster – your spot isn't necessarily safe. Think about past years. The Colts have done 
a pretty decent job finding guys on the waiver wire. In 2012, the Patriots cut Sergio Brown. The Colts claimed him. He obviously was a big key on the special teams units past years. Jack Doyle, cut by the Titans back in 2013, has been a key guy on the offense. And then last year, A.Q. Shipley, cut by the Ravens. He comes in and is a week one starter for the Colts. Mm-hmm. So I fully expect the Colts to scour the waiver wire. And again, you got to think, if Arthur Jones is out for any sort of time, if one of these teams with deep defensive line groups cuts a guy that the Colts fit, feel could fit that scheme, that could be a candidate as well. So, yeah, the cut down is due by Saturday at 4 p.m., uh, down to 53. But like you said, Thursday is the final audition for all these guys to try to make one lasting impression. Well, there's been one guy that's been on the roster for a couple of years now that has intrigued me, and I've really wanted to see what kind of potential he's got. And that's Daniel Adongo, who is the rugby player that they brought in a couple of seasons ago. Where is he at, in your opinion, and does he have a shot at making the roster this year? I think the hardest thing for him is his health has really hindered him from playing in a defensive setting. That Philly preseason game to start this preseason schedule, the first time he's ever played defense in an NFL setting, and again, this is his third preseason. He spent all of last year on injured reserve, got hurt in the preseason opener. And I I think the coaches were pleased with what they saw in that first preseason game. I want to say he played like 25 or so snaps, had a couple quarterback hurries. The good news for him is, A, he's got practice squad eligibility, so he could go back there for next year. And then, B, his biggest drawback is he's at the deepest position on the defensive side of the ball. You think about Robert Mathis, Eric Walden, Bjorn Werner, Jonathan Newsom, Trent Cole. I mean, those are five outside linebackers you can probably pencil in on this team. And after that, do you, is there room for a six? I'm not really sure, especially with Mathis back practicing. So I think Daniel Odongo, probably the, the, the easiest route for him would be back on practice squad, let him develop again, have him stay healthy for, for another season. That's obviously held him back in past years. But I think that will be the route for Daniel Odongo in 2015. Just one more for you, and then we'll let you go. Uh, you mentioned Robert Mathis. Uh, what is the latest on Robert? Is I, is he still thinking there's a shot he plays against Buffalo to open the season, or more realistically, are we looking maybe later on, maybe into September, early October? He, he's definitely still thinking he's going to play week one, and if he doesn't play week one, I don't want to be the guy telling him that. But he, he's <laughs> back to practice. He's practiced here for the past week now. Um, he talked today to the media and said everything's fine. I mean, he... he Looks like the same Robert Mathis in terms of his work ethic coming off the practice field and whatnot. Um, so I think he fully expects to be out there week one. But, again, I mentioned all those outside linebackers. I don't think there's a need to have him come back and play, you know, 60 defensive snaps in the opener. It's one of those things where let's ease him back into saying you don't play those elite quarterbacks until mid-October, early November. So I don't think there's any need to rush Robert back and have him play, you know, 80, 90 percent of your defensive snaps right out of the gate. It's Kevin Bowen, featured writer, Colts.com. Find him on Twitter, K Bowen Colts. Uh, always great stuff. We look forward to talking to you every Tuesday, and we'll do it again uh, next week, same time. Sounds good, guys. Talk to you next week. All right, thanks, thanks Kevin. Kevin. Appreciate it.